This morning, shedding light on a rare disability in a new interview, Colin Farrell is opening up about his son's diagnosis with Angelman syndrome, a genetic disorder, uh, and the first time his son took his first steps. I'll never forget James's first steps. Two weeks short of his fourth birthday. Two weeks short of his fourth birthday. I knew that they were working on walking and she came upstairs and she said, James has something to show you. And she said, go over there. And I, and I stood over there and she had him and she let him go and it just came. It was very, it was, I mean, it was so profound. I mean, it was, yeah, it was magic. I mean, I'll just, I'll never forget and there's the face of determination on him as he just walked towards me, you know, and he took like six steps and I burst, burst into tears. It was amazing. The actor has now uh, started a foundation to support other families with adult children suffering from intellectual disabilities. And joining us now is Amanda Moore. She's the CEO of the Angel Man Syndrome Foundation, another organization that helps families uh, navigate uh, this situation. And Amanda's nine-year-old son, Jackson, was also diagnosed with Angel Man Syndrome. Um, Amanda, I, I, forgive me for uh, just uh, confessing this off. I did not even know this existed. Um, I suppose I, I may not be alone in, in saying that. Uh, most people have never heard of this before. What should they know about it? Yeah, you're definitely not the only one. And obviously the last couple of days have been quite remarkable for our very little rare disease to be able to get the exposure that we, we are getting. And to put it simply, Angelman syndrome is a rare neurogenetic disorder that occurs in about one in 15,000 people worldwide. Um, and it's caused by a loss of the function of the UBE3A gene, which is in the 15th chromosome. So that's to, mm. to put it simply. And, and what does it mean to have someone like Colin Farrell uh, talking about this, uh, this syndrome? Well, it's amazing. Just like you saw in the clip, I think a lot of our families um, have experienced, are yearning to experience that moment of those, you know, those first steps. I know that when Jackson took his first steps, it was the same emotion. You see that determination. You see that um, that uh, drive and that resilience in their eyes and the things that some of us, it, it's so easy for us to you know, take steps. For them, they work yeah. really, really hard and some of our families mm -hmm. are still really working hard. So to have, uh, have that exposure is, is unbelievable, especially for what the foundation's really going to be focusing on. It's an issue not only for those affected by Angelman syndrome, but so many more. You know, there's 7,000 rare diseases in the world, many people struggling with the services, and to have Colin and the foundation to come out as a voice and come along with other organizations working on this is, is remarkable. Yeah, and we were showing that footage a few moments ago of Colin Farrell's son uh, trying to take those steps. I mean, you do see this light in his eyes where he is, he is trying, he is trying so, so hard. And I guess you, you see that, you know that. Yeah, you know, those living with Angelman syndrome are, you know, they, they experience uh, severe developmental delays, debilitating mm. seizures, a lack of sleep. Uh, most of them are nonverbal, so they communicate through, you know, augmentative communication. So, you know, the things that they are, are um, challenged with on a day-to-day -day basis and the way that they come out of that and the resilience that they show is remarkable. And I know as a parent, the things that I learn from Jackson every single day for the, the easy things that are, you know, that come very easy for his twin brother who doesn't have Angelman syndrome and how mm. hard he works to accomplish those it just teaches you something about life and about, you know, taking the little joys in life and, and being very thankful for those. Um, and just the amount of resiliency that they teach us is just unbelievable. Well, Jackson is a uh, beautiful kid. I mean, you can just see it in these mm -hmm. photographs here. Just a beautiful, beautiful kid. And where are uh, the gaps in resources for people uh, who have been diagnosed with this? Uh, what more can be done? Well, I think there's a few things. I think that the, you know, one thing is helping even like the clinical, um, the healthcare system understand how to treat Angelman. A lot of times us as families are going to the doctors and we're instructing the doctors on the standards of care of Angelman because it is so rare and so unknown. So I think really understanding all the rare diseases, there's a lot, and I know that's hard for the healthcare system, but yeah. really being able to go to the doctor and be a mom and not a doctor would be ideal. 
But when it comes to the work that Colin and their foundation is doing, this is something that our families think about from day one of diagnosis. When yeah. Jackson was diagnosed, the fear of long-term care, long-term support, it resonates. And then the people yeah. who are experiencing it now, it's, it's heartbreaking to know, you know, after they transition out of, uh, out of maybe the educational system, there's yeah. little to no services left for these individuals. Wow. And the long-term opportunities of care are not there. So yeah. it's things that we've been raising awareness and advocating for for years, and we will yeah. continue to do so. But to have his voice on such yeah. a high platform, we're so hopeful of what that's going to bring for our community, especially Amazing. our older individuals. Well, Amanda Moore, you're an amazing advocate uh, for your son uh, for uh, this issue. Uh, so is Colin Farrell. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, and thanks to all thank of you, you for so joining much us. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate it. A wonderful spokesperson.